Hi, CPL to one Stirrup here. This is uh, uh, second part of graphing linear functions number two. So let's take a look. All right. Uh, so this talks about a uh, Uber ride, and I don't know if this is the correct terminology for this, but we're just assuming that we are modeling how Uber charges you um, by this equation. So um, if you live three miles from school, how much will it cost your Uber? Well, your x is going to be 3, so we're going to go 0. 0.55 times 3 plus 5.50. And I'm actually going to use the calculator to do the multiplication, just so I know I'm correct. I hope you're all doing well today. So point that's 1.65 plus 5.50. And if I add those together, It's going to cost you seven dollars and fifteen cents to go three miles. Okay, um, if you have forty forty dollars, how far can you go? Well, this is going to become the c at x. Okay, they remember that's functional notation. So c at x is functional notation. So I'm going to go forty point zero zero equals point five five x minus five point five zero or plus point five point five zero. So I'm going to subtract the 5.50 from each side. So that's going to give me 34.50 equals 0.55x. So then I'll divide each side by 0.55. And it looks like I can go 62.5. 73 miles if I round it up. That's a lot far my Uber driver Uber driver can go. So what is a reasonable domain? So remember the domain are the x values and the range are your y values. So the domain, um, you know, you're gonna go more than zero. I wouldn't say exactly zero. I can't imagine you call an Uber and get in the car and then get right back out of it. Um, up until I don't know, probably 100 miles. I don't know how far an Uber would take you, but say up to about 100, 100 miles. The range would be, <clears throat> being if you call an Uber and you don't go anywhere, this 5.50 is going to be the minimum charge that Uber is going to charge you if they you call it and you even decide not to get into the car. And then, you know, I guess we could take the 100 and plug it into the 0.55 times 100 plus 5.50, so that's uh, 55 plus 5.50. So it looks like the most you're going to spend if you went up to the 100 miles, which probably be a reasonable amount of, I can't imagine, I know you could take an Uber much further, but you know, for in the city. Um, so that would be 60.50, and that would be our range. So our domain would look like that, and our range would look like the other one. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> During the last swim meet, Jack dove eight feet away from the starting block. He then swam at a rate of five feet per second. So we're going to call this S at X for swimming. So he's going to uh, swim at 5X, so five feet per second. But he dove eight feet into the water. So if he just dove into the water and didn't go anywhere else, he just stopped right there, he went eight feet. Okay, so this is our linear function for this problem. Um, how far away from the starting block would he be after 8 seconds? Well, I'd go 5 times 8. I plug that 8 in there, plus the 8 that he dove in. So that's going to give me 40 plus 8. So he's going to be 48 feet away from the starting block in that problem. And how long would it take him to go 100 feet? So that's going to be 100 equals... 5x plus 8, and then we're going to solve that. So subtract a 8 from both sides. So that's going to give me 92 equals 5x. Divide each side by 5. And in this case, I would probably make it a decimal. So go ahead and divide it on your calculator. So 92 divided by 5. Uh, it would take him 18.4 seconds once the race had started to be 100 feet away from the starting block. 
Okay, so this one, we're looking at increasing and decreasing. So let's do this in yellow. Increasing means it's going to go up towards the right. So those are the two reasons where we're increasing. So let's take that, and uh, we would be able to say this is uh, looks like about 3 in the x direction. So from 3 to 1, we're increasing, and then it's increasing here. That looks like 2 to 3. And again, we're using our x values on this one. negative 2, negative 3, negative 3. So that should have been a negative right there. Sorry about that. All right, in intervals where it's decreasing, it's decreasing on the rest of the graph. So decreasing is going to be here. So it goes to down to the right as I go to the right. <clears throat> in the interval where it's decreasing, looks like uh, from uh, negative 1 to uh, 2. And those are round brackets on all of those. Okay, we want to find f at 3, so we're going to count over 1, 2, 3, so we're going to be right there. So f at 3 looks like it's going to be at 0, and that's my y answer. f at 0 is right there, so we're going to be at 0, and f at negative 2 is going to be right there, and that's also going to be 0. So all those happen to be 0, and that happen to be, happens to be where it crosses the x-axis with our graph. Our domain, um, being we don't see dots there's not dots here, so like this graph is continuing to go both ways. My domain is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. My range from bottom to top, it's also going from negative to positive infinity. And make sure we can ask about this in class, okay? The intervals for where the graph is positive. Ooh, this means something a little different now. So positive, for where it's positive means where is it our graph above the x-axis? So it's in those regions there. So we're going to go ahead and um, list from negative 2 to 0. It's going to be above in the rounded brackets. And then from, looks like from 3 to infinity, because that arrow will keep going up. Again, let's ask about this in class, because this is definitely different information to talk about, OK? All right, so friends, have a great day. Uh, your homework is going to be um, page pages uh, 45 and 46. And let's go ahead and do the odds on that as well. Have a great day, everybody. Take care of one another. Bye-bye.